All right, so here's the good, the bad, and the ugly about caffeine. So the good is caffeine is an awesome performance enhancer, cognitive booster. There's honestly a lot of great studies in regards to caffeine, longevity, long-term brain function. Honestly, if you scour the internet for positives on caffeine, the pluses are way more than the minuses. Talk about caffeine for a second. I mean, caffeine's greatest strength is preventing you from feeling tired. So there's this chemical called adenosine that builds up, right? It builds up throughout the day and it's absorbed and it makes you feel tired and re regulates your circadian rhythm. So as it builds up, you feel more and more sleepy. It's called your sleep drive cycle. And hopefully that aligns to your circadian rhythm and in the evening you fall asleep. And so what caffeine does is it, it blocks receptors of that chemical from being absorbed in your brain. When you think about it, caffeine is actually way better at preventing you from feeling sleepy than actually giving you a burst of energy. It's more about intentionality than usage of caffeine. You just have to know what you're doing, when you're doing it, and how you're doing it. Now, the ugly is its impact on sleep and the ugly is the amount of time it stays in your system. There's some thoughts with caffeine. So a couple things to keep in mind. The first thing is just understand that it stays in your system a long time. The half-life is five to six hours. So what does that mean? That means it takes your body five to six hours to metabolize half the amount of caffeine. In a real world scenario, that's what this looks like. Let's say the average person has three cups of coffee throughout the day, 100 milligrams each cup of coffee. That's a, that's a pretty small cup of coffee. That's like a normal, maybe Keurig cup of coffee. If they have a cup of coffee at eight, noon, and two, that's 300 milligrams total for the day. Doesn't seem that bad. The same as a large coffee from Starbucks or a Bang Energy, something like that. The issue isn't the amount necessarily as much as the timing. Because when you play that out, that caffeine gradually rises, but it takes a long time for your body to metabolize this. With only those 300 milligrams at 11 p.m., that same person would have about 90 to 100 milligrams in their system, which is more than a Red Bull. Red Bull has 80 milligrams. If that person just had that caffeine earlier in the day around that 8 a.m. time, they would have very minimal, almost a, a ineffective dose in their system by the time they go to bed. It's all about intentionality and when you have it. So think about when you're having it. And then the other thing is think about why you're using it. I think that a lot of people People just have a lot of caffeine because it's habit, but it can be a really useful tool. Like it can really be a cognitive boost if you're not hammering caffeine all the time. Like if you're hammering three, four, 500 milligrams every single day, chances are you're probably not even gonna feel it. It's so habitual, your body is so used to it. You're probably gonna feel it at a pretty minimal level. I always compare it to like a play action pass in football. The goal would be to have a relatively low amount. Try to limit the amount that you use and actually like, use a higher dose when you need it. You'll feel it way more. Really want the minimal effective dose. You can get away with 100 milligrams, 200 milligrams, and then if you have something big or you really gotta work hard on something to concentrate, that's when you use it. So I think it's like being intentional with the timing and the usage of it. I guess my advice with caffeine is it can be great. It can be great at the right times, but can also be detrimental if you don't know how long it impacts your body.